Well, I'm Mary Ann Hill, Halliburton Hill Clark. I'm Mrs. Josie Dell Halliburton B. B E is my last name. Uh -huh. I was born in Alton on Oakwood Avenue. Were you born on Oakwood? I, I was okay. the first Halliburton born there. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I don't know a lot about that. Yeah, I was born on Oakwood Avenue, the first Halliburton. My two brothers were born on Powhatan Street, and I was born on Oakwood. My mother and them bought that house then, and it was brand new when they bought it. And uh, after me, there was... And I'm three from ten, me seven, six of them, seven of them uh, younger than me. And uh, my sister Emma, she, I was five years older than her, but she turned out being a, she went to New York to nursing school to Harlem Hospital. And that's how I come, you know, but we had aunts out there and that's the way we all got connected with New York. My mother's name was Jane Sims, and of course my daddy was Albert Halliburton, and there was ten of us children, and I'm the oldest girl of the family, and I had seven brothers and two sisters that made the ten. Vincent, Harry, John, Emma, William. Ralph, Samuel Ball, he's the one died as a baby, Josie, and Henry Davis. That's all. We had good, a good mother and a good father, and anything we did was all right with them. The last brother just died about two years ago. Julie and I are still living, uh huh? My mother was from a family of 17, had their pictures laying over there on the table. And uh, she was getting close to the youngest child, but I don't know exactly how far she was from the youngest. And uh, her sisters were all business people. That's where I took a beauty school from, one aunt in New York. She, she learned how to do hair and she taught all the rest of the family. I had a cousin and aunt, and oh, all of them was, did something. And I had one aunt that was a caterer for years in St. Louis, and her name was Adele Davis. And then our other sister, she finished high school and went to New York, went to nursing training in New York City. At Harlem Hospital. Harlem Hospital. And then she taught nursing afterwards. She was there for 54 years, wasn't it? Yeah, I think uh -huh. so. Emma Walker, and she has a son here in Alton that moved, after her husband died, Emma moved back to Alton, and uh, her son moved to Alton too, and he's an attorney. But he's been teaching out uh, at Lewis and Clark, I don't know exactly. You what. might know him, Stephen yeah. Walker. And, uh, they all go on know now. The sisters was in beauty culture and, you know, they had beauty schools and things out there in New York and New Jersey. My Aunt Emmeline, she lived in Plainfield, New Jersey for years, and she had a beauty school. And Hazel Bradshaw from Alton went to the beauty school to Ann M's in Plainfield, New Jersey. My mother's father was in the Civil War, and my grandmother and him had 17 children. <laughs> that was some children, wasn't it? <laughs> my mother's father, Vincent Sims. Well, he uh, was Methodist, and my grandmother was Baptist. And he helped to dig the basement of Allen Chapel Church. My grandfather died when my mama was a young girl, but he done had all those children. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> my grandmother married Reverend Lewis Cumley, 
He lived across the street from what is now Tabernacle, but it was Second Baptist at that time. And my grandmother, Mary Eliza Sims Comley, she belonged to Holy Temple. I have memories of my grandfather, John Halliburton, a little bit, not a whole lot. I was pretty young. I can remember him, what he looked like. My dad looked like him, and he would come up once in a while. He lived in East St. Louis, I think. Yeah, that's uh -huh. where he lived. But he was born in Rocky Fork. The rest of them were all, his brothers and sisters were Odie's, and he was a Halliburton. I ran across Reverend Odie's picture yesterday when I was looking through pictures. Well, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, she had to have been that, uh, they were small across the Mississippi River, and they, there's a big house on 3rd Street close to the Y that mm -hmm. they would take those slaves to in a basement. And then somewhere or another, they'd take them on out to Rocky Fork. And that's where my grandfather was born at, in Rocky Fork. John mm -hmm. Halbert. Mm -hmm. All I know, she came from one of them southern states. After that, the rest of the brothers and sisters were all named Odie, and I don't know how they got the Odies, but they were Odies. John mm -hmm. Halbert. Mm -hmm. He married my grandmother, Annie. When? No, she, Annie Arbuckle was her oh, okay. name. She, she had two sisters and a brother. And I don't know, her brother's name was George Arbuckle, and he was Floyd Arbuckle's uh, father. Did you know Floyd Arbuckle? Yeah. Okay. We can. <laughs> Isn't that something? Oh, yeah. Bill Fowler was. Her name was Belle, and then there was a Jenny Arbuckle. And uh, George Arbuckle was Florida Arbuckle's daddy. My grandmother's name was Mary Eliza Drew. They lived on 20th Street. It's a little brick house over there on 20th Street right now where my grandmother was raised up at. 20th Street as you turn, go on the circle. 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 Come. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you start down that 20th Street Hill, it's a little brick house there. And that's where my grandmother was born at. But when my grandpa Sims died, she married Reverend Lewis Cumley. And she had so many children, she couldn't move them all in his house, so she left some on Powhatan and others on Amelia with her. <laughs> well, that was her home on Powhatan. I lived in that house for a long time. At 2623 Poe Street. That's where my mother was raised up at. She likes to cook. I've been a cook and caterer and did all that kind of work. But you ever know since. what? And my mother died. She didn't know how to boil water. <laughs> I'd have to walk out on Oakwood from Elizabeth Street out on Oakwood to cook them dinner every day. And it started getting cold weather. And I, you know, having to walk, I said, Josie, you got to start learning how to do something. So I had to cook. My poor dad put up with so much bad food. <laughs> when my mother died, they had about a hundred chickens in a thing out on the back porch, you know. And as those chickens grew up, she had to learn how to pick them. And, and I've always been afraid of chickens. I, I had too. <laughs> God, I was scared of them, but my... Uh, brother and nephew, they were so honored. They'd wait the time for you to get them, you know, and they'd bruise them up and everything and half pick them, leave the pin feathers, you know. <laughs> Finally, I got brave enough for them to dip them in the water and I'd pick them and did everything. But if yeah, I had to go to through that thing today, I wouldn't even want a chicken. <laughs> But well, see, when Mama died, they had an incubator sitting on the back porch, and they had over a hundred little baby chickens in that thing. And as they grew up, they turned them loose, and the neighbors enjoyed them as well as they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody had chicken. <laughs> but Mama and them had an incubator. Well, this is and, what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, but this way they got the chickens, they had this incubator sitting behind a heating stove. 
in my in the room there, and uh, when they hatch out, that's when they put them in this thing out on the back porch, and they move them as they grow. They move from one shelf to another. Uh -huh. As the chickens uh -huh. move, mm -hmm. they get a certain size, and then they move them to the next shelf, uh -huh. and then to the next, and uh -huh. then. After they got on to the bottom, they'd go out into the chicken yard, you know. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> when my mother died, they had over a hundred chickens in that yard. They just raised them. Um, they had enough of us to eat them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mother came from a family of seventeen. She had ten, and the other sister had one. No, I did have had three children. I I mean three, and mm. but anyway. Those sisters who went to school in beauty culture in New York and New Jersey, they helped my mom. Yeah, mom would go. They to would me. send us boxes, and mm -hmm. clothes, and, and things and then all on the Monday time. Mornings. I remember when I was a child, how we would get, you know, holiday things. And then when my sister went to school, she'd send me things. They all helped. You know, we was a family that loved each other. They always tell, every Monday morning she'd go to the mailbox mm -hmm. and there would be money in the mail mm -hmm. where they were sending her to help with those children. As and they'd say, Jane and her kids. And, and they she'll help Jane and her kids. And then see, Mama was sick too. She was a bad diabetic. Th and they'd send thing. her insulin and everything. I think uh, we were a happy family, the Halliburtons. And we didn't have a lot, but we were happy and enjoyed what we did have. And that's what I can say. And then my family, too. We, I had a good husband, and we enjoyed life with our children and tried to give them pretty much what we could. So I thank God for all that. That's how come all of us are diabetic. Yeah. But believe it or not, I'm not a diabetic no more. Well, anyway, I haven't took insulin. That's it. For two years. I went to uh, Woodworth, Texas, where one of my brothers died, and I was having reactions down there. And when I came back, I went to the doctor and they gave me a blood sugar and he told me don't take no more insulin. And I haven't took insulin now for two years. Well, see, she was so very sick and she wasn't half eating after she had um, heart surgery. She had open heart and she didn't have no appetite and didn't eat and that made her blood sugar stay down. And, and she, it's been down ever since yeah. I had those surgeries. She still don't have a good appetite now, sometimes. But I'm an eater, and yeah, I'm a she diabetic. She eats <laughs> up a breeze. I am next to the youngest, but I've had diabetes longer than any of the family. Because my mother had it when she, me and Stinky were babies. <laughs> and it come out on me later in years. I've had it over 40 years, so I'm truly blessed. I'm able to go and do and work, and I think that's what keeps me going. <laughs> if I stopped and quit, I'd be down. I don't have time. When my mother first had got diabetes, Dr. Samuels would come every day and give her shots. See, at that time, he didn't give yourself shots. But afterwards, she got so she had to give her own self shots. And we all gave our own self shots. And your diet plays a big part in it. Nobody's perfect. And mom, with so many of us, she couldn't afford a diet. You know, right foods all the time, you know. And uh, today, we can more so. And then uh, when I got older and then I got the heart thing with it, you know, and cholesterol, I'm not perfect, <laughs> but I try to watch myself. Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference, but I, I, I will always be a diabetic because I'll never be perfect. I have to watch myself because with the heart, 
and diabetes together, you have to be careful because I had angioplasty too in 88. And a lot of people end up with, with open heart and everything else, and I haven't had that yet. So I'm grateful and thank God as well with me as is. Yeah, when she had her heart thing, I never thought I'd ever. The next thing I know, I was having. <laughs> but that runs in our family too, but because her dad had it some. And so we got the heart daddy. on his side and the diabetes on my mama's side. And all nine of us, I think, had it, didn't they? Yeah. Every uh, one they of got them. it later in life, but everybody ended up with diabetes. So it really runs through families. I went to Dunbar School when I was in the first grade, and then I went to Lovejoy. And from there I went to Del Mar School and from Del Mar to Alton High. I went to Dunbar and Daisy Fair and um, Nevada Robinson were my teachers there. And Fred Penny, if you remember him. And then I left there and went to Lovejoy to junior high. Uh -huh. And I didn't go to high school, I finished up out of the ninth grade. And then quit. Well, that was all right. There was, you know what I mean. There was, they treated you good. Mm -hmm. In fact, you learn a whole lot more than you do now I sometimes. So. You had to be a triple A student to get an A in Alton High because those teachers were. And then another thing, they put all the black kids on the back row. We, didn't go in alphabetical order, you know, just all of us was sitting in the back. Well, they treated you all right, but they let you know you was black. And you had to be a real good student to get a good grade. I was so surprised when I got my first, when I was a freshman, and got my first report card, come up with all F's, and I knew I didn't need all them F's. <laughs> so, I don't know, but then on, the, I had a teacher named Miss Gates. Gates Gates was her name, and she started letting me come in, you know, after school, and she'd help me with different things, and my grades came up. The white children was fine; we mixed up well. Mm -hmm. But you know, but being used to going to just a black school, and then you go into a mixed school was kind of rough. Big switch. <laughs> I married Earl Hill when I was 18, and we was together. How many years was I with Earl? About 30 some years. Yeah. Ago. I knew him when I went to Lovejoy School, but I didn't have no idea he would ever be my husband. <laughs> and I don't know, we just started getting together and when I was in high school. And then we got married when I was 18. Okay. Well, we married in 31. Because people were saying, that's a shame, Jane's daughter then got run. But I wasn't run. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people used to say that. Yeah, they'd say, yeah, they'd say run. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I was married three months before I got pregnant with him. <laughs> Floyd Clark worked at Duncan's Foundry. And uh, well, he was a nice person. And uh, I was young and I needed some kind of companionship. And he was from a big family, too. I don't forgot how many brothers and sisters he had. But he had a lot of brothers and sisters. There used to be a, a he had a brother lived over there on Central Avenue. And uh, he had quite a few children. And then he had more brothers and sisters in East St. Louis. One sister calls me often to check on me. She's a very nice person. Oh, my husband's name was Richard E. B. And um, he went to the service in 43. We was married 30 days, and he left and went to the service. Yes, I right, but he left a little girl in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my little girl was just about two years old when my mama died. She died in 45. Mm -hmm. 
So then I stayed at home. She asked me, I hadn't, uh, she asked me to stay at home and take care of Dad. So that's one, one way I got stuck at home. And then Richard was gone for about two years, you know. So I'm still home. <laughs> <laughs> he um, was a fighting CB and he went behind the Marines. They built, you know, did building things. And it was rough. He was over there in action in New Guinea and the Philippine Island. And uh, he'd laugh and talk about it. And he enjoyed it some, you know, but it was rough because he'd write me letters and things all the time. And then he met my brother over there. He didn't know him, and my brother didn't know him. They didn't know each other. <laughs> And uh, my brother, older brother, was named Doc Halliburton. Vincent Doc. We Vincent Doc. Him. And uh, he was writing me. He said, oh, I'll finish the letter when I come back. A ship just come up. So he went and met uh, Doc. And Doc didn't know him. And he didn't know, they didn't know each other. But he told him, I married your baby sister. <laughs> <laughs> and said, Doc, he was a person... He was hustler. He said he had watches all up and down his arm and was selling, you know. And he said, you married my sister? He said, yeah. So Rich said he dressed him up in Navy clothes because the Navy ate better than the Army and took him to his bataille <laughs> and had dinner with him. <laughs> so he had the good and bad times too over there, but he enjoyed it. His grandfather was named Reverend Bateman, the founder of St. Jane Baptist Church, and he raised him, but his father was named B. What was his first name? Uh, Robert B. Mm -hmm. Madam C.J. Walker, she was in St. Louis, and she taught my Aunt Laura how to do hair. And my Aunt Laura taught all her all the rest of the family about hair. There was, uh, she had two sisters. Annie and Mary Claire. And, and, yeah. and then, then, then a niece, Ethel Proko, Ethel Rice, she, she was born and raised in Alton too. And then me, she taught all of us. And even one of my brothers tried to do a little hair. And that was that? Vince when Did he went he? to New York. I know mm -hmm. that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my oldest brother. He took up a little hair work too. Well, uh, my cousin and I were living together on Powhatan Street, and Ethel was fixing to go back to New York because she had been out there before and learned how to do hair. And she said, they, she called me any. All of them called me any. Any, you better come on and learn how to do this hair because I'm going to leave here. And I would take at nights, because Earl worked evenings at the Acme Bowling Alley all the time. And I'd take a, and put a wig in the, my dresser drawer, and I'd practice on that wig. And I learned how to do that hair in three weeks' time. <laughs> and so then I decided it was time to go and get it right, you know. And that's when I went up there to New York when he was. I guess Junior was about three or four years old, something like that. He wasn't old enough to go to school yet. And uh, I went to school and did hair and review shop and got my license and everything out there. I didn't think too much of it, but I, I got around. <laughs> but I come on back home because his daddy was missing him so much until I brought my baby and came on back home. My cousin and the aunts and things would look after him for me. I was in New York for almost a year, and then I decided to come on back home. Because my, I left my mama standing at the corner of the house crying because I was leaving with that baby. And, and every time I think about it, I could see her standing there. So I said, I'm going back home to mama, and I'm going to stay there with her. And I did. Came on back to mama. <laughs> Some of them had never pressed the hair, as they called, you know, use a hot comb on it. And it was a many a person that I started them out getting the hair fixed. They was good. They all stuck with me. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. And so, at that time, you know what? You wasn't getting but one dollar and two dollars a head. <laughs> That's all they paid. That was, that was no money at all. I could still have my curling irons and things in there in that closet. And she did a crokinole curl, and it was beautiful. She'd curl it. It was kind of tight, wasn't it? And then yeah, comb yeah. it out into waves. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Yeah. Huh? You don't get that today. <laughs> Some people used to put comb, the comb, press and comb down the top of a oral, oral lamp mm -hmm. and heat it up. But I always used an electric hot plate. Well, they use the same kind of combs that they use, you know, but they don't use too many combs on no hair no more. Hot they combs. Use, yeah, rollers. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I used to even have white neighbors with called me and asked me to come and do their hair, and I didn't know how to do white hair, but I, I ended up giving them the same kind of hair do we had. <laughs> yeah, she lived on the corner of Amelia Street, and uh, Amelia, and what is that street? Rockwell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I used to do her hair. I didn't know what else to do, but she had a lamp there, and I'd stick that comb down that lamp and run it through it, and then I'd curl it. Did you press it too? Yeah, I'd press it a little bit. I didn't know no better. <laughs> <laughs> she probably didn't need no pressing. <laughs> but I did, and she was always satisfied. She lived right there on the corner where Elvira and that big house? Oh, oh, okay, El okay. And them lived I remember her, but I can't tell you mm -hmm. her name. <laughs> yeah, I'd run the comb through it a little bit, and and I'd put the, she had a lamp, and I'd stick my curling iron down that lamp and heat it up and curl that. I went through the process. <laughs> I bet it was pretty, though. She liked it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. she, she kept calling me, calling me, and calling me, and asked me would I come up and do her hair, and I went one day. And from then on, I went often. My granddaughter has grown and she got a beauty shop. But she come to me crying one day and said, Granny, I want to be a hairdresser. I said, don't tell me, get to school. And because she, she was going to Shirtliff College at that time. And so she started and she did wonderful. So it really came on down from one generation to another. See, I would be busy doing hair. Junior was a little boy, and I'd say, I'd put on his clothes and everything. I'd say, you go to Mama. <laughs> and, you know, that was dangerous, sending a little child three years old or four, something like that, to walk out to Oakwood Avenue from Powhatan Street by himself. <laughs> but he, he made it. He'd go through that cemetery and go on to Grandma. <laughs> and sometimes I wouldn't see him for two or three days. I didn't know if he made it or not. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have no telephones to know what was happening. And, but uh, then my husband said, Marion, you go get my boy. And I'd have to go out there and bring Junior home. <laughs> Mama worried with him a lot. Cause, see, I wouldn't have time to cook and fix for him, you know, because I did a many, many heads. Some days I'd do as high as 20 heads in one day. Well, you were really the first black beautician. Beautician and all. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so, see, I was a busy lady. He was 17 when I had my second child, but she was born dead. She, I carried her in me three weeks dead. Because Dr. Harden thought she was all right, and she wasn't. And she was dead. He didn't even let me see her because I had such a fit when he told me I, I said, where's my baby and how many did I have? And he said, man, you had one little girl, but she passed away. I said, I said you mean after all this work I didn't have no baby? He said, shut up, don't say another word. <laughs> he was going to Lincoln University at that time. I See, I sent him to Lincoln in September and I had the baby in October. And and. Uh, that's had me worried because I said, oh, how do you go stay in school if I can't do hair? And I got up and I couldn't walk for about oh, several weeks. But my customers come and sit on the floor and let me do the hair. 
And because I, I just thought he wouldn't be able to stay in school, and I wanted my child to go to school. <laughs> His daddy worked every day at the bowling alley. Acme bowling alley. Uh, Earl worked there for till he passed a number of years. But I, but I thought that if I couldn't do hair, he couldn't get no education. <laughs> See, he first started out when he graduated, got him a job at the steelworks. And Earl come home crying one day, said, I ain't going back there no more. I want to go to school. And then when his daddy come home, I told him that Earl wants to go to school. And he told him, pick your school, you can go. And he looked at Earl and said, well, daddy, where you go get the money? He said, don't you worry about the money. You can go to school. <laughs> Earl had been saving for him to go to school. And I hadn't even paid it no attention. So that's the way he, uh, he finished Lincoln University. All of, all of us Halliburton's, at least went, to, most of them went to the eighth grade, because at that time they didn't push you. And, but uh, I was happy when he wanted to go to school. And I was determined to keep him there. And so I'm still happy. <laughs> After my husband Earl Hill died, well, I started working. I was one of the first workers with Head Start. You see, they started Head Start that year. And she come, Josie came and told me, I could have got a job, but I didn't want it. And I said, doing what? And she <laughs> told me. And I said, oh, well, I'll take it. And she, and I had to cry to make her call the lady to tell her I'd take it. <laughs> I didn't believe her. She had never really worked. You know, nothing but the hair. <laughs> I didn't believe she really wanted the job. But honey, I started working. To, to the, uh, I forget what that lady's name was. Uh, Miss Parker. She was over the yeah um, Lincoln Garden Center. And uh -huh. that's the way I got on. Yeah, in the school board. Cause see, after Earl died, people were saying Marion's got plenty of money, but Marion didn't have plenty, and she had to work. Because, you know, this customers start falling off. So that's when I started working with the school. And when I worked in Head Start, the teacher that I was working with lived around on, right not up there in my neighborhood. And she was worried about what was I going to do during the winter time. And I said, I'll make it. And I started babysitting. I had five little kids I'd keep during the day. <laughs> I, 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 I'd get a bit busy if I have to. And uh, so then they said that they wanted someone at the high school to work, and that's when I got on at the high school. Well, I, I knew how to cook, and I, I would do these weddings and things for friends, you know, just because they were friends, they'd buy the food, and I'd do the cooking, and Josie and all the rest of them would help me serve it. And I'd do it for nothing, but I did one girl's wedding, and she was so hateful and charcy and funny. I said, hell, from now on, I'm going to start charging. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that helped me out. Ham and turkey and always potato salad. And then when at the holiday time come, I'd sell pies and cakes. Different ones wanted it, and I'd make them do it. I worked there 10 years. Yes, honey, I don't do nothing. <laughs> I did a lot of cook. I did that longest was at the senior service. I worked there about eight or nine years. I started in the beginning when that first opened, you know. Um, and then I worked there eight years, but it was so hard I had to quit. I, were, um, I was the pastry cook and everything, and I was just, we were cooking for a thousand people at that time, every day, but now that program is not near as big, and it just like to kill me, <laughs> I just couldn't take it, because I'm not sick, but I'm not well neither, so then I quit that. That was um, senior citizen over here on MacArthur's. Um, oh, they yeah. serve a new meal. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and it still goes. We had 13 sites when I was there, but it's not near as big as it was then because there's so many eating places, you know, other eating places, and I enjoyed it. And I was home for about eight years, and Rich, I retired with him, you know, come on home with him, and he retired in 81, and I came home too. And we had a few happy years, you know, just doing nothing. And then um, when he died in 95, I was grieving and felt sorry for myself. So this when I went to this little job. <laughs> so I've been there to be five years next month. And I'm the kitchen aide. I had to get a certificate and everything for this job. So I'll be there five years next month, and I enjoy it. Uh, I don't. It's not a hard job. It's a nice little job. I work under the seniors, you know, AARP. So I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then before then, I used to do catering too, because I had catering jobs. I still got pictures of a lot of the weddings and things we did. We always worked pretty much together. Mm -hmm. And then at my church, I did our banquet for five years, myself and my family. And we didn't charge nothing, we just did it because we were building this new church and we were all working to get our church. So I enjoyed that. So I did some of everything. <laughs> and so, I'm getting old and tired, so I don't know how long I might be here. But it helps me, it keeps me going. I think if I quit, I would just quit, you know, wouldn't do anything. So I, it's good for me some to be busy. I'm a busy person anyway. I've never been idle in my life, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I get tired. And they don't want me to quit. And I was sick this summer, and I was off for a whole month. And they, I said I wasn't going back, I told them, wasn't coming back. And she said, oh, please come back. I hope you get better, because we need you. We miss you. <laughs> so I've been back now for about two months, I guess. I was off for a month, but I'm doing fine. I know the history of Tabernacle. The students from uh, Shirtliff College would come and teach the children in Sunday school and like that. And Shirtliff College gave Tabernacle which was, at that time, Second Baptist Church to the black people. It was in the 1800s because uh, it was when my mother was a girl. And then we see we had a pastor named uh, Reverend T.A. Johnson that came afterwards, and he rebuilt the, that church, and they, that's when they started calling it Holy Temple. <clears throat> and uh, they had some kind of complaint or something, and some members went one way and the other, and then they changed it to Tabernacle Baptist Church, which is now Tabernacle, and I'm the oldest member there. I remember when it was a little white frame church, and uh, I was real small then, but Reverend T.A. Johnson made a brick church out of it. And that's when we named it Holy, uh, Holy Temple. And then they had a confusion again, and that's how come it's Tabernacle. But Tabernacle is one of the oldest black churches in Alton. We had one brother that played hooky from Sunday school all the time, and that was the one we called. His name was William, but we called him Sweet Man. <laughs> and the Sweet Man played hooky from Sunday school just like he was going to school. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, well, we just grew up. We was a happy family, and, and all of us was busy doing something different. <laughs> but we we're the only two left out of nine children. <laughs>